my mic on? Okay, it's working. Before we start, I'm going to make a request. Everybody, please take your seats. Come on down closer to the stage. I promise we're nice, sort of. Um, secondly, we have a very limited Wi-Fi access here. It really only can take 50 users. So we're asking you, unless you really need it, please come off the Wi-Fi, because otherwise our IT will crash, and you'll be stuck with me doing some kind of puppet show up here. So please come off the Wi-Fi if you can. Thanks. accelerator and an investment fund. There's this huge ecosystem that they can be a part of. We grow here, we bring in more technologies, we bring in more businesses. We bring in a diversity of people and engage them with all that this region has to offer from an optics and photonics perspective. We wanted this to be the biggest accelerator in the world for optics and imaging technology companies. Introducing us to business development, optics professionals, participation in Luminate has brought value and will continue to bring value what I like the most about the Illuminate program is that the people understand hardware, so they understand what we need in terms of product development. I've been around the optic space applying it to different markets. You don't see a lot of facilities like this, and this, this is really unique. We identify 10 early stage startup companies from all over the world. We bring those 10 companies in, invest $100,000 into them because they have such great ideas. There is a huge ecosystem and base of people that have knowledge in photonics, knowledge of how to find investment, have knowledge of how to manufacture. Support, business development, access to people who are knowledgeable in marketing and sales, business planning, financial planning, these were things that we really needed. The resources that they gave us is quite amazing. Luminate is not the average incubator. Luminate is an incubator on steroids. In six months, they go from being a really cool tech concept, early stage startup, to really a functioning business. There are going to be a lot of big decisions we need to make. As engineers, it's such a privileged moment to see the technology we've been working on make a positive impact on people's lives. With their help, we can transform a company from a Kiwi fledgling startup into a valuable international company. So we're very excited to be part of that. We have that much faith that the company's great and it's going to grow and it's going to hire people. Rochester, the optics capital of the world, has provided great access to industry experts. We have an enormous amount of infrastructure here. I think that's why Rochester will succeed in this optical photonics and imaging initiative. I'm super excited to be able to bring that technology to life. We put further investment into one or more of the companies, up to a million into a single company. The funding levels and the funding resources will be there to help us get to the next stage. It's going to return both financially as well as economically. If you have an investment community and a critical mass of startup companies, it becomes very sustainable for a long period of time. This is a perfect storm for a photonics company like us. I have everything that I need to be successful. The Lumina experience has been great because there is a lot of mentoring available. We've had access to experts coming in from around the country. It's been actually very enlightening. My main goal in this company is to make people's lives better. Some of the technologies that these folks are working on could have some pretty significant impact on the world. All entrepreneurs have to do is come here and start working, from co-working to offices. We've got wet labs for people that need laboratories. We've got prototyping shop with 3D printers and laser cutters. You come here and you're part of something. You're part of a community that will help you financially. It will help you with your overall satisfaction with your business. So we're streaming this, so to your friends at home, if you're texting them, if you're sneakily on the Wi-Fi, at Luminate Accelerator, Luminate Rock, or at NextCore, you can follow right along. I am so pleased to welcome you all here, especially those of you who brave the weather, which really isn't that bad, but you know, for those people who bought tickets in our home because they're afraid, they're missing out. This event marks the start of a journey for our third cohort. This is following two very successful cohorts. And many of you have been at our previous events and you may have a favorite team that you are rooting for. We thought you might be in here, interested in hearing about some of the updates from some of the previous winners. So. 
We're pleased to share a few little updates with you. First of all, uh, all of our 20 companies that we have so far brought into the program, actually over 20, are still in business, which in the startup world is actually a really good thing. Um, and it's kind of exciting. Double Helix was our first million dollar recipient and is preparing for its product launch and working with Cornell on refining its technology and with local manufacturers to produce their offerings. Double Helix is attracting worldwide attention, having won prestigious awards like the PRISM Award. Intelon Optics, our first $500,000 recipient, recently hired a director of manufacturing who resides here in Rochester and is working with local suppliers and manufacturers for production. They received their CE mark and may begin shipping medical devices in Europe. And they're looking at this point of raising a substantial B round as their value increases. Think Biosolutions, one of our first $250,000 recipients, and they have relocated from Ireland to Rochester and they are producing their first round of products. And rumor has it that they also seem to always win the uh, local pub trivia contest. So look for the Indian Irish guys in the pub. They are cleaning house. <laughs> um, Rochester-based Rochester Team Positive Science has extended its eye tracking solutions for infant and animal research. Um, the size of his team has been growing. Their revenue has been growing. They've been steadily making progress. And we're really excited for the regular progress that they're able to have. Some of our award recipients from Cohort 2 are also growing. Ovitz is now up to seven employees. BPG has nine. Circle Optics is filling our entire office at NextCore right now. I think they have at least 10. Um, this momentum is carrying Rochester's imaging history as an unparalleled resource. And Luminate connects this past with our future and really helps us with our continuing global recognition as an industry leader in optics and photonics and imaging. And I'm really grateful for the part everybody in this room plays in that. I want to take a moment to recognize the efforts of the Luminate Advisory Board and judges. I am personally very grateful for that support and that advice. Please stand up and be recognized, because I do recognize you. And don't make me call you by name and come still stand. You know who you are. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We thank you to our principal academic partners for their support, the University of Rochester and the Rochester Institute of Technology. Also joining us today are some of our partners and sponsors, including SPIE, OSA, Sony, IMAX, Thor Labs, and others who have really helped contribute and make this program successful. Luminate also points to the Rochester Photonics Cluster, the technology and the financial ecosystem that we really work, on, work with that supports and recognizes this next generation of startups. Recognizing Rochester as a photonics hub is a direct result of the presence and growth of all of these optics companies. And we're particularly grateful to the numer numerous businesses that have supported Luminate companies technically and that sometimes had to provide some rather parental support and we are extremely grateful for their cooperation. I also need to recognize the Luminate and NextCore team. I begin by thanking Andy Simon who handles all our teams and keeps us moving efficiently. Damon Deal. Our Yay, he's our technical program manager. I am particularly grateful for these pe people because without Andy's direction, I would still be wandering around the parking lot right now. And we'd like to thank Gary Nothard for keeping our lab state of the art, and he fixes anything that's broken, including when the popcorn machine was broken. So again, thank you to Gary. Sandy Sloan, she is our event organizer. Her attention to detail is absolutely amazing, and I am really grateful to her help. I am pretty sure she is the reason that we're all on Weight Watchers, but that's okay with us. Um, Holly and Kate are our marketing team. This year we had 50% international applicants, a diverse group of entrepreneurs, and a record number of applicants. Thank you for getting our name out there. We also like to thank Jim Snell, Lynn Cranmer, Nicole Morrow, and the rest of NextCore. It takes a village to clean up, clean up after the tornado that we call Luminate. In the next hour, 22 finalists will compete to win one of 10 coveted places in Luminate's third cohort. They will each receive $100,000 in funding, plus an opportunity for an additional total funding of $2 million. And June, on June, please join us for our demo day with our Light Tomorrow Today event. It's always a lot of fun. And also today, join us at the reception this evening after the awards presentation taking place in this museum, which is one of Rochester's really great treasures. Those of you who've had small children here will know what the, it's a lot of fun to take your kids here. It's actually just a lot of fun to be here. So take some time, tour the museum, visit your childhood friends on Sesame Street. You can do that while holding a cocktail, which you can't do normally, so that's kind of exciting. <laughs> Um, last and most importantly, none of this would be possible without the support and leadership of Governor Cuomo and the Empire State Development. I want to also thank the Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Council um, for providing their support and prioritizing this project. We'd like to thank Vinny Esposito. He's not here today, but he's been super supportive and helpful, help making sure all of this works for us. 
We'd also like to th support, thank the support of New York State, the federal government, as well as the city. It's the reason without all of these organizations, Illuminate wouldn't exist. Um, but we also get to operate out of NextCore in that state-of-the-art facility, which is the anchor of the city's innovation zone. This facility, with all its amenities, mentors, and location, is a powerful attractive attractor for startups. So if you have a startup and you think you're looking for a good tech place to go, the Sibley Building, it's really, really nice. Today provides an exciting glimpse into what tomorrow can bring. The third group of companies to participate in Illuminate, the world's largest optics accelerator, is an example of how New York State, along with $30 million AIM Attraction Fund, is making the Finger Lakes the region really the epicenter of OPI discovery and development. The innovations you'll see here today will help drive economic growth, jobs, and our leaders leadership for generations to come. Already more than $6.1 billion has been invested as part of the Finger Lakes Forward Initiative. And in providing Luminate companies with the necessary capital to jumpstart their businesses, we're investing in their success. We're also investing in the, the success of this community. I hope these, co these companies inspire our strong entrepreneurial community, as well as the students who are here today, to see firsthand what, they can, what results come out of studies in science and technology and math. This includes events like the Photonics Camp at the University of Rochester and the Magic Center at the Rochester Institute of Technology. So with that, I'm going to go introduce the first company. And coming up on stage is Acnatech, and we have Edgar joining us to present. Here's just a clicker. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to be here in this lovely place. Hello everyone, my name is Edgar Janons and with my colleague Lawrence who is sitting here in the audience, we came over from Germany and I'm glad to introduce you to Acnatech, which stands for Ocular Technology. We developed a new technology for ophthalmologists which would help them to improve cataract treatments. There we target premium lens implantations which promises better vision, uh, to remain spectacle free after cataract treatment also. And, but there are some challenges which we try with our technology to solve. 25% cases, the surgeries do not work out the way they are intended to be. And in, as a consequence, patients may get low night vision or low contrast or double vision and so on. And uh, these cases should be treated then with the follow-up surgeries, and which brings additional risks and costs for the, for the patient. This is undesired, right? And therefore, we try to solve this, this problem. <clears throat> and um, our technology will enable the surgeons to correct the results without doing any additional surgery anywhere else. And that will essentially improve the life quality of patient. The technology is embedded in this device, diagnostic device, it's automatic and intuitive to use. Well, the technology is patented. We just got the market approval for Europe and series we are ready for series production. We initiate a new market um, by promoting premium, premium lenses. And with our technology, we bring advantages to all stakeholders. In, in other words, it's a win-win situation for, um, yeah, for everyone. The patient get better vision without additional risk or cost, and the surgeons will be able to ensure the target results, and the, for the clinic it means patient satisfaction and cost optimization. If you are interested in our technology or you have, you have questions, please talk to us. We'd be, we would appreciate to talk to you. Thank you so much. Next step, we have Adacron and Tom Shafi. Thank you very much. My name is Tom Chaffee. I'm the founder, inventor, and CEO of Adacron. You can find us on page seven in your program. This is a rendering of our system. What is our system? Our system is a two-way laser communication system that is sh obviously shooting the laser through the air instead of fiber optics. Not to replace fiber optics, <clears throat> excuse me, not to replace 
microwave backhaul, but to complement both of those technologies. And the reason, uh, the reason that we can make this technology finally work, it was at a silver bullet for a lot of years, but it wasn't able, it wasn't market ready. We have made it work with an ultra short pulse laser, which finally overcomes the weather issue. So the question is why, why do we need it? It's because we're all going crazy with our smartphones and our wireless devices. We're putting so much pressure on the different cell sites and any place you've got access to the internet that the biggest problem is right here, what's known as the backhaul. And the carriers to a carrier in, in this country and all over the world, the problem is just one mile. They'd like it to go as, long, as far as possible, but their carriers are telling us literally individual carriers, this is not hyperbole, one carrier in the U.S. told us they need one million links. Every one of our links needs two of everything. That means two lasers, uh, two optical amplifiers, and those can all be made in Rochester. There's going to be a huge amount of lasers that need to be uh, manufactured for this product. We can go to market with a $25,000 uh, MSRP or lower if we are manufacturing in the thousands. We can be uh, probably even less than that versus a fiber optic $100,000 per mile. And the problem with the $100,000 per mile is it is stopped fiber in, uh, installation around the world, no matter what they tell you at the telcos. Uh, we've got a fantastic team. You'll be able to see these slides. We've got a worldwide patent position. And I welcome talking with anyone about uh, the opportunity of, of Atacron making lasers and working together. Thank you very much. Next, we have X Primary with Sean Higgins. Hello, friends of Luminate. I'm Sean Higgins, CEO of X Primary. We build mobile bioanalytical tools and supply portable biosample testing. The problem with the current situation is that bioanalytical instruments or tools are quite expensive, oftentimes because of large optical packages that are on board that are expensive. The result of this price point causes the instruments to be centralized, which then causes the samples to have to be shipped to, this, to the instrument uh, cohort. Biosample shipping is error, is, is error prone um, and causes a lot of uh, inability to do te important testing. X Primary builds mobile, portable bioanalytical tools. I'm hand, I have one in my hand right now, which is an automated microscope. Uh, we also provide the consumable point of collection assay technology that goes into the instrumentation. As an example of two of the instruments that we're building, one the automated cell counter, automated microscope, and another the flow cytometer, you get a sense of, of the comparables and the price points that we're introducing, a rapid and dramatic change in the ability to onboard technology. As a result of this, we believe that our unit sales will go through the roof. We, are currently, we currently have four instruments in development. They are easy to use, they will generate a large install base, and result in significant consumption of the assay content. The industries we address are research, both in academia and pharma, pharmaceutical drug development, healthcare, meaning basic diagnostics, as well as an educational mission that we can fulfill. There are several other that we, we can talk about later. We have a strong team with excellent coverage of what we need to accomplish. Sean, myself, uh, 25 years in the bioanalytical tools industry. Scott Selleck has 15 years in optical and systems engineering. And Eric Higgins has 20 years in software engineering, 10 of those in Silicon Valley, most of that at Google. We're ex primary and we're bringing bioanalytical tools and analysis to you. Next, we welcome to the stage Giga Concept with Eric Girard. Hi, my name is Eric Girard. I'm here to present a, a uh, opportunity for us to, uh, for somebody to help us uh, establish uh, U.S. operations uh, for uh, production, sales, and development of our patented te technology. So our, our, our technology was developed for telecom test and measurement. 
with reliability and test standard that uh, go with telecom test and measurement uh, usually. We have an, ex an exclusive license and we offer this technology for all laser sciences everywhere. Polarization controllers are a standard component that we can have manually used in, 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 in uh, the, the lab. Uh, 21st century equipment using uh, polarization controllers need to be able to auto-adjust, they need to uh, be able to uh, prevent service call this way. Uh, we don't want to open the hood or, or, and play with parts uh, all, the, all the time. Um, we also use this technology for multimodal scrambling. So on, on the image on the right, you can see that it's far more uh, easy to read the text there when we remove uh, laser noise. This is one of the main technology uh, application for our technology in macroscopy and other things. Giga concept is Eric Girard and Vincent Gagné. So uh, Giga is our names. We've come from Montreal, Canada. We were established in 2005 and uh, have been working with uh, fiber optic processes for a long time. So our products are made uh, modular. So initially, the uh, polarization controller, this is a two-motor controller, is big as a finger. We, we make them bigger and modular now, so we reuse all our parts to address any single um, application for a single scientist, or it's uh, even efficient for volume production for, uh, for some of our customers. So these are some of the applications that we uh, that we serve. Thank you. The next team is Hequian, and presenting is Verhan Virak. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Farhan. I represent Hakeen, early stage cybersecurity startup from India. So we help to secure your data using quantum randomness. Uh, we were finally at ICT Spring Europe, held at Luxembourg, and we were part of GeoGen Next, India's largest corporate accelerator. And recently, we were also selected for uh, Google Developers Launchpad. Uh, so coming to the problem statement, any encryption technique, whether it's RSA or AES, it starts with a random number. But random numbers generated by classical computers are pseudo-random numbers. They are not at all random numbers. Any access to that random number can compromise your security. So solving that, so we make use of uh, principles of quantum physics. We make use of a principle called Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, wherein we detect the unpredictable behavior of photons. We capture them using our image sensor, and we generate this true random number which gives you a strong security aspect. So this is our uh, prototype. We have a single laser source, shoot to a gel source, then a splitter, then an image sensor. So our USP, there are companies which offer quantum randomness, but on top of it, we provide two powerful encryption systems, lattice and homomorphic, which make it more stronger to even stand against a quantum computer. Our hardware costs one by tenth of the cost, what the cost is in market and we provide a simple plug and play usb device with an entire web platform coming to my team miss hanan is our ceo and she was ex ceo of tagwit a quantum encryption startup based in chile and she also received her scholarship by international society for photonics and uh, optics i'm city of this company i myself have filed two patents for which governments in india have paid me to make them into products and when it comes to Li-Fi, I have two, I have two national level hackathons. Siddharth and Vikram, they help us to package software and hardware into a single system. We have a strong advisory board. We have well-known names in AI in quantum. On top of them, we have Professor Srikanth, who is one of the rare uh, personality in India working on quantum encryption. On his credits, he has 60 plus papers published. Summarizing our pitch, we are Hakeen. We provide QRNG device based on quantum physics using power of photonics and image processing. Thank you.
Next, we welcome to the stage Heat Inverse and Roland Scott. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Roland Scott, and I am part of Heat Inverse. Uh, the inverse of heat is cold, and we produce products that actually produce cooling. Uh, our thin films can produce, can be produced cooling with zero power, moving parts, and no waste heat generated. The products have been developed from research that has been underway for a number of years in uh, uh, metamaterials out of Stanford, Columbia, and Cornell universities. And our uh, product is really uh, one that is very exciting, um, sometimes called amazing, <laughs> and uh, we're, we think it has, can have dramatic impacts. The big impact is that we are using a lot more cooling and we're predicted to actually grow cooling uh, based on actually the heat swarming, as well as incomes are actually making a lot more people want to cool. So um, by 2060, we are actually predicted to use more energy for cooling than for heating. Our first market is refrigerated trailers, and we anticipate that we can put a thin film on top of the trailers and these trailers use about 3,000 gallons of fuel each per year. And we think we can save 25% or over $2,000 per trailer. And there's 500,000 of them in the U.S. Um, we will sell to basically companies that have large refrigerated trailer feeds like Wegmans here in the area, as well as uh, we've been cooperating with a number of uh, the supply chain. We anticipate creating more than 80 jobs over the next five years. We are New York based out of Cornell and uh, we anticipate being in the region. We have many products that we're, that we're uh, developing, including ones in the future for solar PV and buildings. We are heat inverse and we are looking to dramatically reduce the greenhouse gas emissions from cooling. Next on the stage is I'm Mad and Denise Valenti. I'm Dr. Denise Valenti, and I have 30 years direct clinical experience in vision, cognition, and driving. My company is IMAD, and I'm frustrated, saddened, and angry over the ever-increasing rate of fatal crashes directly attributed to marijuana-impaired driving. This is advancing by itself. <laughs> and driving. Um, unlike alcohol, there is not a standardized field sobriety test, nor is there a breathalyzer. IMAD as a objective test solves the problem of lack of functional testing. IMAD will be used in conjunction with both a, either a breath, saliva, or blood. It won't replace it. IMAD is an objective tool. What is it? IMAD is a simple vision test. It's not a game. It's serious. A law enforcement officer would take a virtual, go virtual goggle, put it on the head and face of a driver. The driver would look straight ahead, and whenever they see stripes in their vision, in their peripheral field, they will press a Bluetooth response button. If they are high, they cannot see many of those stripes. Our market are law enforcement, and they already need this technology. It is an objective, and it will be safe for the officer to use roadside. Other markets are a simple screening device. Many manufacturers and industry will need this technology. 
We have many options to move the IMAD into the law enforcement community so every police officer can have one. Primary among them are direct sales to the municipalities. We have a team that is deep with talent and expertise to have developed this in the first place, but we also will be quickly able to move this into the marketplace. IMAD is a technology that will save lives. Thank you. Next up, we have Kilo Medical Solutions with Joshna Silam. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Joshna Silam. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kilo Medical Solutions. We're an early-stage medical device startup that is primarily focusing on bringing innovation to the pediatric medical devices. Um, our first product, Brisolet, is focusing on uh, providing a safe sleeping environment for premature infants in the neonatal ICU. 15, 15 million babies are born premature every year and they're placed in special incubators called isolettes that have controlled parameters in terms of heat, humidity, and oxygen levels. One of the important factors that nurses are currently not able to control properly is light. Light plays an important role in determining how well the infant is able to sleep in this environment. Just like how we're not able to sleep in bright lights like this, the same principle applies for these infants as well. And any improper light stimulation is negatively affecting their ability to sleep. So the images that you see above here are what nurses are currently using in the neonatal ICU because there's no medical device that's out there that's helping them to do this better. Unfortunately, these blankets not only fester bacteria, but they also block the view of the infant, which is really important for nurses to have. And since there's no device out there in the market, we've created one to help them out. So through the use of electrical films, we're able to allow care providers to precisely control how much, light that the, uh, how much light the infants are being exposed to at any given time. And more importantly, our device can be retrofitted to any existing incubator model that is currently out there in the hospital. So it's simple to use. It's just as if you're putting a screen protector on your phone, and it can help, uh, it can help infants sleep better in this environment. This is the team that has invented and developed this technology. We have core background in biomedical engineering and product innovation. We also have a board of advisors and key partners who have been extremely instrumental to our success thus far, but we're always looking for help. So if there's anyone in the audience who have a nursing background or any sort of help that you can provide us to take this to market, please reach out to us. That's my email, and we'll also be in the reception. So let's have a conversation. Thank you. Next on the stage is Meet Optics with Barbara Boides. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Barbara Boades, the CEO and co-founder of Meet Optics. Meet Optics is a online platform that gathers the available photonic products that are in the market from different providers and put it in one place. And it can be seen as a catalog of catalogs of photonic components where our users can find the photonic products and um, compare them by the specifications that they require. The idea of developing mid optics started from my own frustration. When I was doing my PhD in quantum optics at ICFO, um, this is a picture of my experiment, the, it was very really frustrating for me to have to stop the experiment for two days, for two weeks or even longer, to have to find all different photonic components that I needed in order to make my experiment work. This problem is not something that I just had, it's something that is shared amongst all the community. There are 400,000 researchers and optical engineers that share the same problem. As a solution, we decided to develop Mid Optics, this online platform, um, with a meta search technology. This technology allows us to gather a large uh, volume of products in one place. Since it's our own technology, we can develop it such that it's highly specified for photonics, such that our users can find, compare, and um, sort any product by any specification they require for their application. This is something you cannot do with Google or Amazon nowadays. 
On top of that, we will implement a guidance, a professional guidance using artificial intelligence um, based on uh, pattern recognition in order to help users find these optics or, or these photonic components in just a few minutes instead of days or hours. We launched the prototype of mid optics in June this year, and um, since then we grow in number of products. We have over 20,000 products. We have 16 different subcategories in lenses and mirrors, and we got over 2,600 users with a monthly growth of 20%. Since the launch, our users are pushing us to accelerate development and finish it of the meta search, and the providers see us as a valuable resources for them to promote their products. With Midoptics, we want to make uh, Midoptics be the place, the first place that researchers and optical engineers go when they need anything that it's about photonics, that they need uh, to search for information, guidance, or photonic products. Thank you. Next is Nanograss Photonics and Dr. Poya Dianet. Hi everyone, my name is Puyad Dianet. I'm the CTO of uh, Nanograss Photonics. Our product, uh, we, we, are, we work in the uh, uh, fiber optic teledata communication and th that's the backbone of 5G communication and beyond. Our product is a photo detector uh, that is high performing and it gets embedded inside this, uh, this device package. Uh, that goes inside and sits in there and it converts the uh, optical signal to electronic signal. Now, that's a $5 billion market for this transceiver and that also uh, is the bottleneck for making the internet basically faster. Uh, the problem that we are trying to solve is the problem of the data centers also known as the cloud. So places like Facebook, uh, Amazon, Google, they, they have to deal with tremendous amount of data. As a matter of fact, they have to process five times larger amount of data that exists in the internet. So uh, in a data center like Facebook, uh, they have to send a signal from one side of the data center to another side of the data center really fast and efficiently with a consum consumption of uh, minimal power. So uh, with the size of the data center being like sometimes four football fields, that's going to be a very difficult task. So they rely on these transceivers or optical switches that goes in the servers and uh, converts the light to electricity or, and send the light over the fiber from hundreds of meters to, uh, to hundreds of kilometers. Now, uh, the problem with the data centers is that they are kind of a le legacy uh, technology. They are high in price, high in demand, but their supply is low. So by using our technology, we, uh, we make the operation of the data center efficient and fast so that you can have a much faster internet. Um, our technology is uh, based on uh, the different physics that we do. We use electron density waves rather than the conventional concept of uh, electric current, which is movement of single electron. We use these ripples that you see as uh, the way of transferring the information. So we have uh, disclosed the, uh, the uh, technology in a patent that is issued. P please check it out. As a matter of fact, the inventor, uh, Bahram, is sitting in the audience. And I have uh, had the pleasure of working with him for the past uh, 10 or 12 years. So we think we have the right time, market technology, and uh, team. So please do up the electronics with us. Next is Nordetect, Lutkinen Pinto. Good evening, Rochester. My name is Keenan Pinto, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Nordetect. We've traveled all the way from Copenhagen, Denmark, one of the most sustainable countries in the world, to tell you about our tech and our company. What do we do? We help farmers optimize their soil and water supplies. Why? Because think about what life was like before the advent of the portable blood testing device. You had to take a test, you had to go to the hospital. That's what it's like for a farmer today who needs to understand the health of his crop or his land, specifically related to fertilizer. Fertilizer management is crucial for every farm because if you underuse it, it leads to improper yield. If you overuse it, it leads to environmental damage. And what I've heard is in the Finger Lakes region, you're, you're quite well off with that. You understand it really well. 
All of that to the farmer is a big risk. So what they do is they just add extra, 30% extra. And that adds up. That adds up to about $9 billion spent globally on excess fertilizer. That's not only bad for the planet, it's literally bad for their bottom line. So what do we do? We disrupt the traditional process of going from sample, to shipping, lab testing, to results, to a very simple process where you take the sample and you test it on the spot. We go from 15 days to 15 minutes, and at a third of the cost. Meet CERN. Sorens our lead user back in Denmark, and he owns about 750 acres. He spends nearly $100,000 on fertilizer. We've worked with Soran to understand how we can decrease his fertilizer use because of his excess, and what we found is that working with Soran, we can actually boost his bottom line by 5%. Imagine if all the farmers had access to the technology. The market is estimated to be about 4.1 billion US dollars. How do we do it? We do it with a simple lab-on-a-chip solution that you can fit in your pocket, but the device is a little bigger, so you have to carry a briefcase. You can test your samples on the spot, or you can gather them and test them um, at a later point. All of that data is then uploaded to a cloud server where we can give you a map-based view, and we can give you economically efficient recommendations on how to improve. The team that put this together is myself and my co-founder, Palak Segel, who started the company in 2016 based on an interest to bring medical-grade technology to agriculture and the environment. I have a background in product development from IKEA's design and research lab, where I looked into hydroponics, and palak has been working in medical diagnostics. We're backed by some of the best early-stage investors uh, globally, and we're looking to be here in Rochester and learn about how we can improve our optical assembly. Thank you. The next company is New Rise, and this is Luis Botinho. Good afternoon. I'm Luis Botinho, co-founder and CEO of New Rise, a startup from Portugal, and we are helping doctors deliver safer and accurate radiation therapy. Every year, close to 14 million patients are diagnosed with cancer, and radiation therapy is the best treatment for 60% of these patients. However, it's quite often things can go wrong. And we have something like this. What patients, what doctors are planning is not what patients are getting. So there's deviation. Sometimes this deviation means that the patients can get severe secondary effects or even secondary cancer years, la years later. And this also translates into additional cost to the healthcare industry. And the reports show that close to $9 billion are spent every year here in the United States due to sec secondary effects of radiation therapy. So how can we solve this? The way to solve this is to use what is called in vivo dosimetry. How Neurise is doing? We use probes that can be placed in the patient's skin or inside the patient's body in cavities or catheters that are already being used for the treatment. So we are not changing anything in terms of the treatment. And we use something quite simple as a material that converts radiation into light and we take this light into our equipment. With that, we can track the amount of radiation the patient is getting and compare what was the treatment plan. If there's something wrong, we can stop the treatment immediately or, or we can provide guidelines for treatment readjustment. As a team, we are a team of physicists and engineers, PhDs in physics with a lot of years of experience in development of radiation detectors, nuclear instrumentation. But this is not enough to take a technology into the market, so that's why we have strong collaboration of mentors and investors, uh, sorry, mentors and advisors for the, from the healthcare industry and big companies su such as Siemens, Philips, Ologic, Electa. So this is how Neurise is helping doctors deliver safer treatment for the patient. Thank you. Next, we welcome to the stage Pixel Display and David Wyatt. I'm David Wyatt, CTO, co-founder of Pixel Display. Now, lighting tomorrow is one of the key features of uh, Luminate's agenda. So I want to ask everyone if you can think for a moment why light is important. Now, I believe light is important because more than 40% of our brain is devoted to vision. A light, color, contrast, these are also the elements of communication. And today, the modern device for communication is the phone. Every pixel of information is made out of three colors. 
red, green, and blue. Now, the problem is that that blue doesn't exist in nature. There's no blue in sunset, no blue in firelight, no blue in candlelight. Now, it is that blue, or actually no blue, that triggers plants, humans, and animals to know it's time to sleep. So these devices are keeping us up later at night. I think you all know that. But did you know that last year it was also proven that that high-energy blue also causes a toxic molecule buildup in the retina, leading to accelerated macular degeneration? So now you know. These things are also literally making us blind. Okay, we knew we had to solve this problem at the source, at the light itself. And to do that, we created a new technology of LED with new materials, new digital control, that actually can create an eye-safe nighttime experience, as well as wide color gamut in daytime, and combined for better brightness at the same battery life. Are there other solutions to this problem? Not really. Okay, now we have one patent issued, we have two licensees, sorry, and five patents pending, two licensees in China, one in Japan. We've got excited customers who are coming online. But I also wanted to talk about the second thing, which is NanoBright. Now, NanoBright is a new non-quantum dot nanoparticle. And what should be exciting for the folks of Rochester is that now it's possible to create photonic and plasmonic structures that are smaller than the wavelength of light, enabling highly functional films, as well as our original intent of nanopatterning on microLED. So as I mentioned, I believe we share an interest in lighting tomorrow, and we have a passion for making sure that it is eye safe, as well as enabling the next generation of micro LED displays. We have folks on the ground in Asia enabling the ecosystem, as well as a long-term plan for enabling the smart pixel generation. Thank you, we have pixel display. Next on the stage is Roll RR with Philip Funkhauser. Hi, I'm Philip Funkhauser. My company is Roller. We have a, uh, I'm the inventor of Roller, and we have a patent issued with 28 claims. This is the world's first mobile digital billboard, and we're here to get you noticed. And there's no better place than Rochester to expose light as that, that way to get you noticed. The fastest way is with images. Oops. Who remembers the blue light special at Kmart? That was just one light, they moved it around, they got you to your aisle, and it was great. Uh, with Roller and our 1900 pixels, we can create images. Those images uh, are the fastest way for the human brain to interpret the message that's being sent. 60,000 times faster than text. So how does it work? It's very easy. In under two minutes, you roll it out, plug it into your chosen source of battery or outlet power. It automatically connects to Wi-Fi or cellular, and then downloads the latest content from the cloud. But we know that content is always changing. Marketers love to change content. So that content can be changed at the moment, per sign, or synchronized per store, uh, per city, per region, or even throughout your entire organization. So, we would love to work with Rochester on creating a, a unique infrastructure, an ecosystem, if you will, to support rolling out many, many, many thousands, millions of rollable displays in all their forms, whether it's LED or OLED or microLED. It's a great place to do it. In fact, I changed this sign on the way here to match some of the logos that we see here in town. Thank you very much. Welcome, Rubitection and Dr. Sana Gaspard. Ja, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Santa Gaspard. I am the CEO of Reprotection and the primary inventor of its technology, and I have a doctorate in biomedical engineering. Reprotection is a medical device company that's addressing a global healthcare problem known as bed sores by providing caregivers with a low cost early detection tool. Our vision is to end the needless deaths that are caused by a bed sore, which was experienced by the Tassel family. In 2007, Baron Tassel fell from his roof and was rushed to the hospital. While at the hospital, he developed a severe bed sore. It was so severe, you could see all the way down to his bone. Byron would eventually die from complications of his bed sore, and his family were awarded $6.4 million in a wrongful death suit. Byron is just one of the 23 million people diagnosed with this condition every year, 60,000 of whom will die needlessly. This is because if you can detect the condition early, you can prevent it. But early detection is actually very difficult. The, manu the early, de early detection test is manual and unreliable. It's so unreliable that this preventable healthcare condition cost the U.S. healthcare system $11 billion in one year alone. A cost insurance is no longer covering, creating a huge unmet clinical and market need for low-cost early bed sore detection tools. We're addressing that need with the Rubitect assessment system. It's a handheld device that allows any user to detect a bed sore at its earliest stage. We've already developed an initial prototype, and our initial results show that we can detect the early indicators of a bed sore. Compared to our competition, we're more reliable, we're easier to use, and we're cheaper. This will allow us to dominate a $4.1 billion market, which includes sales to hospitals, nursing homes, and home care agencies. The team behind Rubitection includes a dedicated team of engineers, and we've surrounded ourselves with experts in the field, which includes a wound care specialist. As a team, we're dedicated to solving this problem because no one should have to die from a bed sore. And with our technology, will empower anyone with the ability to detect them early, to save lives and reduce cost. And we invite you all to join our revolution today. We're looking for clinical partners and team members and growth capital, and we're looking to learn about the resources in Rochester to help us grow. Thank you. The next company presenting is Sanur, and it's Chao Shen. Hello, I'm Chao Shen. Thanks, I'm Chao Shen from Sanu Technologies. How many of you enjoy scuba diving? I remember the first time I'm diving, I feel really uncomfortable on my eye, on my ears, and I want to tell my coach, Houston, I have a problem. But it takes me three minutes until I understand I do have a problem. That is because it's really difficult to talk and communicate when you are in water. That is in particular an issue for many, many industrial applications. Remember, there are millions of devices underwater, sensors, vehicles, that is not connected because there's no Wi-Fi underwater. Sanu, so we bring internet to underwater and empowers the internet of underwater things. For, by a team of prof, uh, photonics professionals, we developed the fastest Wi-Fi devices and systems. With the patented Li-Fi transmitters and receivers, we already built and tested and demonstrated the underwater high-speed wireless optical commission link, or Li-Fi link. What people usually do nowadays, they use acoustic that can send signals, but it's really, really low speed. Well, the RF is high speed, but it does not transmit in water because of the high absorption in water. Uh, remember, the marine life does not like acoustic at all because it generates a lot of noise to them. While our laser Li-Fi technology we developed Sanu, we bridge this gap by providing a really high-speed and eco-friendly communication link underwater. We are Sanu, we empowering the internet of underwater things. Thank you. Next up is simulated inanimate models, and we have presenting Dr. Michael Wilson. Okay, thank you for your attention. Uh, my name is Mike Wilson. I'm the COO of SIM, Simulated Inanimate Models. Uh, we're based right here in Rochester, New York, and our company is focused on improving patient care in the operating room. 
we're trying to address the major issue that in today's modern advanced world, inexperienced surgeons learn how to perform surgery by operating on live patients. It's essentially on-the-job training. And this is the way surgeons have been trained for hundreds of years, dating back to the origins of the practice, as you can see in this lovely painting over here on the right. Now, surgical training is one of the many issues that leads to medical error being the third leading cause of death in the United States. The problem is that there's really no sufficient alternatives. The physical models available for training lack realism and pretty much any value. Additionally, surgical education is rooted in this outdated apprenticeship model that relies on one-on-one -on -one instruction between the expert surgeon and the trainee. We desperately need better ways to train the 750,000 surgeons in the United States and Europe. So, what we're proposing can candidly be described as a flight simulator for surgery. We're going to deliver efficient, effective surgical training using a patented two-component system. Number one, we're going to deliver lifelike models, synthetic models, of human anatomy or physical phantoms. And that's what's shown right here in the video. Now, these complex models can simulate a complete operating room procedure from beginning to end. More than that, we're going to couple these models with proprietary software and custom optics hardware, augmented reality hardware, that can deliver educational content, guidance, and feedback in real time, similar to uh, some of the commercially available models right now. This is ultimately going to enable instructorless education, but more than that, it's going to enable performance evaluation, certification, and allow surgeons to train to a certain level of competency all before putting their hands on a live patient, ultimately reducing the risk to the patient in the operating room and helping save lives. Thank you for listening. I'll be happy to discuss this with anybody who's interested. Welcome, Spec Cell and Ross O'Hanlon. Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Ross, oh, and I'm from Spexel. We've travelled here from Edinburgh and Scotland to speak to you about our new novel biosensor technology, which is going to allow rapid screening of stem cell health. So, stem cells. Stem cells are used to repair diseased, dysfunctional, and injured tissue. Currently used for transplantation and replace of donor organs. Um, yeah, so here's a few examples, current news articles. Uh, some of the critical diseases that stem cells are used for is uh, cancer, multiple cirrhosis, and also Alzheimer's. The problem with this is the actual process. It's very time consuming, it uses a lot of skilled human resource, uses a lot of human cells, and it's a very, very wasteful process. Our solution is a real-time, fully automated stem cell analysis system, which will allow the monitoring of the stem cells during production within the incubator, allow for the well-differentiated stem cell health, and allow for stem cells to be used as therapeutic agents and also as pharmaceutical compounds. So here's an, an illustration of uh, our product. Uh, the sensor, optical sensor, scans across the well plate, which contains the stem cells, uh, all in real time, and all the information is fed remotely to a computer so it can be analyzed. This allows for mass production. So we've had a lot of industrial and academic uh, interest in our product. Uh, here are just a few. Uh, one particular one is uh, GSK, who approached us, a large pharmaceutical company, who are interested in uh, potentially using our uh, product in the future for drug discovery. So here's our team. Uh, we have a highly skilled team of over 50 years experience in biomedical and in the optical industry. Um, our inventor and founder, uh, Dr. Luis Acevedo, uh, has previously um, commercialized the product with Renishaw, so he's experienced in uh, product development. And yeah, all the rest of the team are working together to really make this product a reality. So if you have any questions, uh, come speak to us after. Cheers. Thanks for Next, we welcome to the stage Sphere Optics and Rob Angler. Hi, we're Sphere Optics, and I'm Rob Englert, and we've created the world's first and only single-lens 360 full spherical image capture solution. Our system captures the entire omnidirectional field of view on a single frame using a single camera, which means no stitching, no stitching artifacts, and no parallax errors. 
We started out as immersive filmmakers uh, frustrated with using our own multi-camera rigs. And we knew that there had to be a better way. So we created the Sphere Pro 1. And we've used it to film all over the world, including for Dutch national television, where the directors were able to view the actors in real time uh, remotely. We've also done work for NASA, filming the James Webb in the world's largest clean room. And because the sensor can be scaled to fit almost any, or the, the, the lens can be scaled to fit almost any size sensor, um, we see all kinds of applications. But how does it work? Well, we're taking uh, the profile of a conventional fisheye and revolving it around a vertical axis. Then we, which creates an annular projection that we stretch over a virtual sphere that can be viewed with a VR headset. We've been working within the Rochester optics community since the very beginning, and we hired RPO to help us optimize our design. The system grabs 186 degrees in the vertical and 360 degrees in the horizontal. And we've had an overwhelming response to our technology. And we hope that with the help of Luminate, we can satisfy the requests that we've had for lenses from all over the world. Thank you. Next, we have Sun Density and Dr. Nish Sonawalker. Hello, Rochester. How are you doing? It looks like we are too serious here. You know, we have to make some fun. So let me now take you to the fun place in photonics because we are in the photonics capital of the world, which is Rochester. So in this, of course, we know that photonics is a very important part of life now. And when I started doing research at MIT a long time back, I realized that it's not the semiconductor, it is the photonics that can make really big change. So what we did is that if you change the photons that go into some of these devices, then we can improve their efficiency if, without changing any semiconductor physics. And that is much more elegant solution. For example, this solar panel with the photon groundbreaking photonic coating that we have created, I can improve the efficiency of this by 6 to 8 percent and generate almost 20% uh, more power. With that, I can take a panel and generate 360 watt from its 300 watt panel and generate a lot of uh, economic wealth for clean energy. And uh, of course, the same thing is for the other industries. Those are architectural glass as well as optoelectronic industry. So the way we are approaching this is that uh, we are going after the PV industry first. And for one gigawatt of uh, power plant, we can save them $159 million. So obviously, they are highly motivated to work with us. Uh, with, uh, uh, and the way we do it, we take the bad part of the light and move it to the good part of the light for the devices like PV. And we put that in a glass panel inside so that they, that can make a difference. And with that, I think uh, we have a third party validation done by a very reputed uh, industry company, Fraunhofer. Uh, we also have a great team, experienced team, and also from uh, advisors from MIT and other places, uh, like Launch New York. We have a great impact on the environment. We can reduce 2.9 gigatons of the, of the CO2 in the next five years. And with that, while we make money in Rochester and make the economy here really uh, boom and flourish again, we will be also saving the planet. So are you ready to save the planet with me? Yeah. Thank you. Next we have Serge Evans and Dr. Daniel Chirot. Check on seven. <laughs> Every single day, 50,000 Americans get a skin biopsy at the dermatologist, but they wait two weeks to get the diagnostic result. We aim to innovate cancer care by enabling that diagnostic at the point of care bedside instantly. 
with a technology called confocal microscopy. It's an optical imaging technology that we've recently shown to be highly accurate in detection of the most com common skin cancers. Compared to today's pathology process, confocal may be compact and inexpensive and may improve the clinical workflow and may improve outcomes and may expand the diagnostic network, leading to more early detection events, particularly in rural and underserved areas. The market for digital pathology is projected to be over $10 billion in 2020. So we will partner with Luminate to position surge events as the clear choice in digital pathology with three keys to success. The elegant patented geometrical optics in our imaging device, the intuitive patented uh, visualization software that is compatible with both artificial intelligence analysis and the electronic medical records, and the business acceleration ecosystem here in Rochester, the optics capital of the world. Surge Advanced technology is peer reviewed, published, patented, and supported by the National Institutes of Health. And the result is a digital stained pathology that any pathologist can read instantly without the need for retraining. This is the new look of confocal pathology, and it is absolutely positioned to disrupt the entire pathology market. And we are ready to take it there with expertise in medicine, technology, and entrepreneurship. Together, we can improve the cancer care for millions and millions of Americans using the diagnostic power of light. Thank you very much. Now we welcome to the stage Think Outside and Monica Lachstahl. Hi, I'm Monica. I flew in all the way from Norway. I am the founder and CEO of Think Outside, and we, not surprisingly, are digitizing snow. Did you know that 14% of the Northern Hemisphere is covered in snow and ice, and 50% of Europe is covered in seasonal snow and ice? And by the look of it, from what I saw today, Rochester, you have some of that too. So the increasing climatic changes dis does something to the snow and ice system and the dynamics of the nature. So what it needs is to be monitored and visualized and understood more. And that's what we do um, when I click it the right way. Here we go. So what we do is create um, radar sensors, state of the art, couple this with all different kinds of data sources, churn it through a processing system that comes from the oil and gas industry, and out comes visualizations, analytics, and new way of insights. The first market we targeted was not just sexy, but it had a clear problem, something that every backcountry skier in the world would know, and that is the instability of the snow and the avalanches it can cause. So what lures behind that beautiful blanket, white blanket? Well, you wouldn't know, but we will show you. So what we do is make skis really smart, not just beautiful. So we put a sensor on the ski, and the sun's radar waves onto the snow, and it reflects back when it meets the changing layers. That way, we can visualize and monitor the snow every step of the way. So it works like this, a radar device that sits on the ski and an uh, app platform that allows you to uh, make educated data-driven decisions in the backcountry. And the market for snow and ice monitoring is huge. It's a time of 21 billion US dollar. And it's very immature, guys. So this is, this is the time to go there. I don't do this alone. I have a fantastic team of um, seniors from the oil and gas industry, obviously being from Norway, serial entrepreneurs from the US, and some really talented young kids. Now, I came here because I heard that you guys are really good on radar and visualization tools. So please come talk to me if you want to take your position and really dramatically change this uh, market. Thank you very much, Rochester. So that was all the teams that came to, 
to pitch for you today. And before we announce the winners, I want to take a minute to thank all these teams. This is a very difficult competition to get into. It is very, very difficult to, to place in it. Um, some people have to come a few times. Uh, and we encourage people to apply more than once because this is very, very difficult. And if we invited you here and asked you to pitch on the stages because we already believe that you are a winner and that your company is going to succeed. So whether or not you walk away with an investment at this point, um, please pursue because you, you, you are here because you really have a good business. So with that, I am going to ask for the envelope. And what we're going to do is, as I call your name, please come forward, accept your award, and go to the end of the stage. Um, thank you. So, this. All right. So these are the 10 recipients of this year's Luminate Awards. And first, first we have, this is read in no order. First, we have Hequian. <laughs> Second, we have Pixel Density, Pixel Display. Third, we have Simulated Inanimate Models. Fourth, we have Think Outside. <laughs> nice look of surprise. <laughs> That's a bit of a surprise. <laughs> Fifth, Aquatech. Sixth, we have X Primary. Seven, we have Sun Density. Eight, Kilo Medical Solutions. Nine, Rubitection. And in 10th place, we have Sonor. We ask you all to join us for the reception afterwards, and we thank everyone for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in June. Thank you. Wait one second. Nothing, you have nothing else. Okay, well, thank you. We'll see you at the reception.